and search for directions. My thoughts reflecting. All right, bad scramble. Just launched a boat, Minnesota. Big muskies, got a low light window coming. But we're also going to walk you through how I like rigging these Defiant 232s and 210s uh, with these muskies in mind. Okay, so this is a 232 moderate sink dark trout. And I have another 232 moderate, I'm sorry, slow sink and light trout pattern. I want to have a more subtle option to show these fish in case uh, they're not responding to like a big thump, heavy vibration, double cowgirl bucktail style lure, the big old alien things. I've had some pretty good success on these. So I'm gonna walk you guys real quickly here through how we rig them. Okay, so you got a nice high quality crimping tool here. I've got some double sleeves here with a nice little uh, sleeve kit from High Seas. And we're using 130 pound uh, fluorocarbon. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be one of these two sleeves. And here's a uh, high seas Grand Slam 100% fluorocarbon leader. I've had pretty good, good success in my short musky fishing career thus far with this. I've not had any leaders close to being uh, bitten off. So I'm going to check sleeve size really quick it's probably going to be too big for the smallest sleeve which is true so that next size up is going to work perfectly all right and I like a little bit shorter leader like that kind of 10 to 12 inch range and the nice thing about crimps is you don't really waste a lot of material as far as that fluorocarbon leader because it is expensive now we're going to try a couple of different things here. I'm going to try one big 7 aught bronze treble hook off the belly of the moderate sink. And maybe even try running one smaller off the nose, just kind of just kind of free swinging. This is a big no name brand deal and I'm literally just gonna let it slide down the line and probably rest on the actual leader maybe off of a split ring actually just to get the clearance I want so it kind of just free hangs off the front of that bait there um, and actually and this is non-scripted obviously as you can see I'm try a couple different hook designs how that hook compares to the other in shape and I kind of do like the shape of this one or I could also be overthinking it right now and I could be good with just one giant hook because that's a cleaner presentation so yeah let's get that thing Rocking and rolling, okay. So one of the big benefits of this bait in particular is its versatility in that you can rig it top hook or bottom hook, okay. And it's a line through. So you do still have some separation of that heavy bait once these big muskies come up head shaking and such. It's, uh, I wish it could slide all the way up the line, but you know, because we're fishing fluorocarbon leaders to braid, that isn't exactly possible. Talking about me. I'm not, I'm not fresh meat. Locals ain't used to this. It's rotten, but still kind of edible. And just different enough to fascinate your curiosity. <laughs> it's 
So here you go, that's one end of it. Okay, and I'm actually just gonna leave that free hanging. I kinda like the way that looks. Kyle agrees, you guys can't see that, but he's nodding and in like I anticipating. Nodding. He's nodding in excitement. Very much excited, anticipation. So we got one more sleeve here. And a nice high quality 130 pound ball bearing swivel from AFW. And this will help minimize and eliminate line twist from casting the bait as well as hopefully keeping those fish from leveraging off of the bait once we do connect. So they do behave like our saltwater barracuda at home. They head shake violently, gator roll, and the last one that I hooked and lost was my PB and she did all kinds of wild things. And we're gonna be fishing over open water for the most part. So I'm not really too concerned about that big free hanging seven knot hook catching very much anything besides a giant muskie in the face. All right, so it's real simple. 130 pound leader, crimp on both ends, split ring to the hook and a nice quality swivel at the top. And this thing's ready to fish. Okay, so I'm gonna have that moderate sink ready to rock. I'm gonna do the same thing with the slow sink because there are times I feel like I can present this bait a lot slower uh, than they're used to seeing. And having that realism of that bait is a big confidence booster for me. So I'm gonna try and keep things pretty consistent here. So all this stuff plays in your mechanics on your figure eights and getting those followers to commit because I'm anticipating seeing good amount of action hopefully and I have yet to get a fish to engage me on the figure eight boat side but it's just one of those things that's gonna happen my, my first fish I almost got to do it was a Murray Cod so like that was dope but uh, thanks to some quick thinking uh, my man Cal actually stuck uh, what he coined as the coolest bite he's ever had in his fishing career so that was cool so we pulled the old bait and switch but I know if I had just kept figure eating that fish I would have probably got her to eat so it's only right that I saved my first true figure eight bite for a muskie so same deal same deal here 130 pound through the crimp through the split ring split ring to the hook and I wish I had a way to get like a solid ring on there because that split ring does pose a small percentage um, of a point of failure for that line to get caught in the actual split but I'm not worried too worried about it 130 pound is pretty forgiving stuff Okay, so we're gonna kind of maintain the same deal here. Just a big free swinging hook. And you notice the position of where that hook entry is different. So the moderate sink is designed with the thought of bottom bouncing and coming through cover more. Slow sink is built with a different line insert and angle to help facilitate swimming through the middle to the upper portion of the column. Okay, so that's why they're different. So, got sleeve, got bearing, ball bearing swivel. Rocking and rolling. And I like ut utilizing uh, smaller profile components, smaller profile cramps, smaller profile swivels. When it comes to rigging hardware, I'm, I'm a minimalist at heart. So now we have two different colors, two different sink rates, uh, ready to fish. And then in the case that they do want to respond to a smaller bait, I'm actually going to rig smaller option this is a white pearl brand new color 
and they all come rigged with these double stock hooks top rigged we'll save that for another day for fishing through like vegetation and such but all white that's just a real fishy color i've already had some big muskies commit to to this uh particular bait and we're gonna go what size hook i almost want to say screw it <laughs> huh what do you think boys and girls why not right yeah i almost kind of like that boom all right we're gonna do the same thing so exact same setup and this has worked for me already uh you know we started building these rigs uh the, about two and a half seasons ago when i first came across these muskies this is one of those lakes that i first stopped and actually uh, dedicated some time to musky fishing so super pumped to be back here nice thing about these baits 130 pound fluorocarbon slides right through the harness same situation sleeve we'll get the split ring make sure that's not the right size we get a big beefier split ring good set of split ring pliers are a must Boom, pops it right in. Might have done that a time or two. Same process. Same efficiency. There's no guesswork on leader lengths. You just cinch up the crimp and go. Because I've seen where guys prefer knots, but you know, coming from a saltwater fishing background and exerting maximum pressure on a 250, 300 pound fish, uh, this stuff has proven itself to me and being able to handle big trophy fish. But boom, there you go, 210. Simple leader, clean. Can't leave home without my eye slides. All right, so. So I'm gonna rig up a short fluorocarbon leader to fish this 262 with. And this is a bait that I caught my previous PB on. It's a 46 incher. And got it to react to this uh, freshwater bass style glide bait in a pretty profound way. This is where I learned minimizing my rigging really paid off because these bass style glide baits can be a little bit more temperamental in their swim and this bait especially but with this minimalist approach I can get this thing to dance the way I need it to and I've caught uh, several good muskies on it including my PB so we're gonna keep rocking and rolling there cut it right about there super simple it's nice to have this little rigging kit from American fishing wire AFW, those that like acronyms. Kyle just taught me what a pog was today. Congrats to him and his girlfriend. I mean, pogs are a big thing when I was growing up, but you know, they were like little round, like cardboard things. You hit them with the slammer. That was a whole different kind of pog. All right, you know, I'm gonna go with the Okaiwa. This looks pretty perchy and tulip ish little trick for you kids that are still learning the ways of uh, birds and the bees. A little spit makes things a little easier. Slides right up in there. Since I rigged this leader with a decoy number five egg snap, I can easily change out the color. And I can go back and forth between some of my favorite eyeslide colors and slide it right through. And like some people might say the snap is a potential failure point, but so is everything else. And as long as you are using high quality components, it's really not a factor. We are in search of personal best muskies. We'll be traveling throughout the upper Midwest.